Are you guys hungry? Where's your man in the beauty? Who wants a taco bar? Woo! change a person's life, but just stick with it. Um, it changed the path where I want to go towards. Fortunately, I got into college. <laughs> Not just any college, my dream college. Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. <laughs> I'm going to be majoring in business, and I hear their program is great. But I think to myself, Charlene, what are you going to do with your business degree when you graduate? And this is where Tonka Bars come in. Tonka Bars is a social business and has guided my interest towards social business. The company that produced these Tonka Bars is called the Native American Natural Foods Company, and they have shown me what a real business practice looks like. They don't care about the money like any other business would. A lot of businesses can make a lot of money, but social businesses care way much more about the money. They care about making a difference in their community. When we went to the Tonka Bar headquarters, we met the CEO of Tonka Bar Company. Her name is Carlene, rhymes with Charlene, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, three things really stood out to me about this company. One, they care about the community, like I said, and they offer job training. At the Pine Ridge Reservation, they have the highest unemployment rates in America. And this company recognizes that and wants to help with that problem. They offer job training to those who don't even know what, how to like work and do entrepreneur stuff, so they teach them how to be entrepreneurs, and that's awesome. And once those group of people learn how to be entrepreneurs, they teach other people how to be entrepreneurs, and it just makes this whole generation of entrepreneurs on the reservation, and it's great. Number two, they stick, tr they stick to traditional customs. The CEO, like I said, her name's Carlene, she told us that this beef jerky, I mean, buffalo jerky, excuse me, this buffalo jerky comes from her grandmother's recipe of old traditional food, old traditional Lakota Sioux food called wasna. Everybody say that with me. Wasna. Cool word, right? Yeah. So every bite you take from this buffalo jerky, you're eating sacred traditional Lakota Sioux food. Isn't that cool? It's awesome. <laughs> so, the last thing, which is awesome, I mean it, really awesome. Native American Natural Food made itself the first company to make itself, I said that already, but make itself the na a national brand. A national brand. It came from this reservation, one of the poorest places in America, and they disperse the products all over the world, even here in San Francisco. They sell these Tonka bars at Whole Foods down your block, or REI, and that's amazing how that they could take it all the way from here. And yeah, and one day I want to be part of a social business. I think what they do is awesome. I want to be part of the change. You could be part of the change. I'm not saying that you have to major in business at Cal Poly, but maybe just be aware of the social businesses around you. Be a consumer of these social businesses. Tonka Bar gives people a voice, especially the Lakota Indians. Thank you. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to have a speech impediment. So essentially, I didn't really have a voice. It was only until third grade that I actually learned how to communicate with others. Um, but look at me now. I'm kind of talking in a group of like 300 people or so. <laughs> but I also use my voice in other places now. I've been working at the San Francisco Zoo for about five years. And up there, that's Athena. She is a Eurasian Eagle Owl. And she's my newest friend that I work with. Every Sunday, you can catch me and Athena outside, rain or shine, at the Raptor Talk, talking about wildlife conservation, and the importance of an apex predator in an environment. But just like Athena, who doesn't exactly have a voice, um, I am her voice. And the same thing kind of goes for the poor. 
they don't exactly have a voice in society. On the reservation, we met this man named Jimmy. Jimmy is not exactly the type of guy you would go up to on the street. He kind of had scars ramping down his face, and honestly, the adults we were with were kind of frightened. But we gave him the opportunity to tell us his story. And when you allow someone to tell us their story, something really cool happens. And he told us that he was a part of a gang, a really big problem on the reservation. But he got out of it. But once he did, they decided to retaliate him, leaving him physically scarred and legally blind from wounds inflicted by a crowbar. But we were one of the only people to listen to Jimmy's story. Not everyone will give him that opportunity. And that's the really cool thing about Tonka Bar. Tonka Bar is their voice. Because not everyone's lucky enough to have parents who would move from their home of 18 years in Pacifica to San Francisco just to have their child, just to get their child speech therapy. And not everyone's gonna, ha not every Eurasian eagle owl is gonna be taken off the black market from the legal pet trade and placed into a hotel for animals. Like literally, it's a hotel. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but that's the really cool thing about Tonka. It gives them a voice. It gives Jimmy a voice. It gives the people of the reservation a voice. And collectively, we can be their voice. Three years ago, my mother suffered from a stroke. Long story short, it was a very difficult time and I often felt really trapped. During the summer of that year, I went on a 12 day camping trip with a nonprofit organization called Environmental Traveling Companions. I never knew that sleeping under the stars, being immersed in the wilderness, and getting close to a group of complete strangers is all it took to make me feel like me again. Um, so I've always been really fascinated with the Native American philosophy because they hold the earth so sacred to them, to their hearts. Um, two words, metakwe ulasin. It means everything is related and nothing exists in isolation. That's a Lakota prayer that's held really sacred to them. Um, so when we visited Pine Ridge Reservation, we stayed at the Red Cloud Renewable Energy Center where we met a warrior named Henry Red Cloud. We got to learn about his business called Lakota Solar Enterprise, which does some amazing things. First of all, he wants Native Americans to depend less on harmful, destructive practices to the environment and move to solar energy. Another thing is, he creates houses made out of like mud and straw bale that ultimately like break down and come back to the earth, which is, I don't know, I think that's pretty awesome. Um, it's really inspirational to see businesses like Lakota Solar Enterprise and Tonkovar who use environmental practices because it really embodies the Native American tradition and culture. Yeah. As part of our trip to the Pine Ridge Reservation, we visited the Wounded Knee Memorial, which is very significant to the Lakota people. Here, I met a girl named Casey Good Buffalo, and as we were talking, something in the conversation sparked, and it was our passion for helping others. I want to be a nurse when I grow up, and I developed this sense of wanting to help others from watching my parents struggle as I was growing up. My parents didn't have the opportunity to go to college, so they do everything they can in their power so that I can have the opportunity to go to college, so that I can have the opportunity to be better than they are. And in the same way, I think everybody else should have these same opportunities. Unfortunately, people like Casey, who lives in one of the poorest regions of the United States, might not come across these opportunities because they're not attainable because of the circumstances she lives in. And so that's kind of where this passion developed. And <clears throat> as this famous microfinance visionary, Muhammad Yunus says, poor people are like bonsai trees. And what bonsai trees are, um, they're trees that grow in the space that they're given. So if a tree is planted in a small tiny pot, that's the biggest it's gonna get. But if it's planted in a forest, then it could grow to its fullest capacity. Casey and I are bonsai trees. The only difference between us is that I was born in a forest and she was born in a small tiny pot. If we give people the opportunities and resources they need, then they'll be able to grow to their fullest capacity. better way to end
attend this talk than with family. Behind me, we have a photo of my family and I when we first immigrated here in December 2005. I bet none of you could guess where I am in this photo. <laughs> but the reason why I share this with all of you is so that each and every one of you can realize our interconnectedness, our interrelatedness. You're an immigrant, you're an immigrant, you're most definitely an immigrant. <laughs> and the reason for that is all of our families come from somewhere. Europe, Asia, probably even Africa. This is the land of the Native Americans. And if you're not Native by blood, you're an immigrant. The story of my immigration starts thousands of years ago, just like you. But let me tell you a story of my grandma. My mom's family grew up dirt poor. My mom even only had one uniform her entire high school career. Because of that circumstance they were put into, my grandma had to juggle three jobs just to provide for a house that can easily be destroyed by a storm, to provide food on the table, but most importantly, to provide for the education of my uncles and my aunties. Because of her undeniable work ethic, she was able to raise six college graduates. Similar to my grandma, mothers all over the world want to utilize education to uplift themselves, their children, their families, and their communities from poverty. How do they do this? Well, one tool, but no silver bullet, is microfinance. Believe it or not, I had no clue what microfinance meant until I went to South Dakota with these four wonderful young ladies, yeah. Ms. Dash and uh, Ms. Kabas and Southwood High School, who's watching right now. But before I get too ahead of myself, what exactly is microfinance? If we analyze the prefix and the suffix of the word, micro means tiny, microchip, microscope, microfinance, and finance means money. And if you put those two words together, microfinance is the general term used to provide small and tiny loans to poor people, but not just any poor people, but to those that have a dream, to those that are empowered, and to those that want to make a difference in their communities. As I learned from my South Dakota trip and my AP government class, microfinance empowers women. If women are financially stable, they don't just take all that money to themselves. They make sure that they're able to provide the best education for their families. It even encourages women to start their own businesses, like Tony and Sheila, with Bugsy's Cookies, just right on Fillmore. And if you're still feeling a little bit hungry from those taco bars, make sure to support social businesses just like Bugsy's Cookies. They benefit from Kiva.org, a nonprofit organization that practices microfinance. How exactly do they do this? Well, it's through you and me. We can contribute $10, $20, and if you're even feeling a little bit ambitious, $100 to Kiva borrowers just like Bugsy's Cookies so that we can support their goals. And with these amount of time, they're able to repay us back with that same exact money, and we can contribute that money to other borrowers. The cycle of giving never ends with Kiva. With that money, we have shown borrowers that we believe in their ideas, their goals, and in them. You can be that someone that encourages women to start businesses, that enlightens everyone to find their voice, that enables humans to respect nature, that empowers poor people to pursue education, and educates others about microfinance. Together with our similar backgrounds as immigrants, our interrelatedness and our interconnectedness, we can make a real difference in this world. And this might just seem like some chunky buffalo meat to all of you, <laughs> but to us, it symbolizes so much more. Thank you. Wow.